Hello and welcome to the technical demo of Krake, showing the orchestration of the Arcuda client application. My name is Patrick. Before I get to Krake itself, I will give a brief overview of the necessary prerequisites prepared in advance. In this demo, I will show how to register Kubernetes clusters in Krake and set label constraints, how to schedule the application and what happens when I trigger a rescheduling cycle that deletes the application on one cluster and rebuilds it on another. On the right side, you can see an illustration of what Arcuda does. Basically, the Arcuda server instance, which should be GPU enabled, provides GPU processing power to any local or remote instance running an Arcuda client application. In terms of prerequisites, UPV has set up an Arcuda server instance in advance to provide GPU computing power. We at Cloud and Heat, on the other hand, have set up a Krake instance on the AS Print OpenStack. UPV also has set up two Kubernetes clusters. Krake itself runs on the Krake OpenStack instance in a virtual machine. To deploy applications using Krake, a containerized image is necessary. Therefore, UPV has containerized its Arcuda client application and put it on Docker Hub. This image is used to trigger a GPU accelerated test process with the deployment by Krake on one of the clusters. In addition to all of these steps, all of the required cluster certificate files were sent to Krake and the cluster configuration files and Arcuda client application manifest file were set up. Alright, now that I have given a brief overview of the configuration, I will show how Krake works. But first, let's clean up the illustration and visualize only the most important parts of the demo. That's better. So, here in the figure, in the upper half, we can see that Krake is running on the OpenStack instance. We also see the two provided UPV Kubernetes clusters and the Arcuda client image, which was published on Docker Hub. This figure changes with each step and should help to understand what is going on. In the lower half, we can see several command line interface panels. The middle panel shows the command line interface where we communicate with Krake. Krake's own command line tool is used for that. It is called ROC. The two panels on the left watch the UPV Kubernetes clusters directly. There it is shown when a Kubernetes pod is spawned. In the panel below, a Krake specific watcher is located, which shows where the Arcuda client app runs once it was scheduled by Krake. The two panels on the right show the log outputs of the Arcuda client app. This helps us to see if the app was deployed successfully and works as expected. Now let's register the given clusters in Krake. First let's check the cluster list of Krake. As you can see, it is empty. For the cluster registration we use rockq cluster create followed by the path to the cluster config file the cluster's name will be Krake1. With dash L we can also set a label. Let's keep it simple with cluster equals Krake1. Now we can repeat that process for the second cluster. Great, both clusters are registered in Krake now. The next step would be the creation of the Arcuda client app. For that we use rock cube app create followed by the path where the application manifest file is located, the name we want to give the app and as an optional argument the label constraint can be set. Let's go with cluster equals Krake1. Now Krake pulls the docker image from the docker hub and deploys it on the Krake1 Kubernetes cluster. You can see that some of the watchers changed. On the top left watcher, a pod was created named Arcuda and the status shows that it is running. The top right panel shows the log outputs of the running pod. The Arcuda app is working. 
before the process can finish, let's trigger a rescheduling action by updating the application's label constraint to Krake2. Now the status of the pod changes from running to terminating. Because the label was updated, Krake builds the application again on the other cluster, Krake2. You can see it in the watcher on the left. This time, we wait until the process finished. Great, the process finished and in the logs on the right we can see that the doc.jpg was successfully predicted. In the last step we clean up by deleting the Akuda client application. To do that we call rockcube app delete Akuda client. After Krake finished the deletion process, the app no longer shows up in the Krake application list. That was the last step of this technical demo. Thanks for watching.